Hello and welcome to Honest Car Reviews. My name is Eric and this is the brand new Mercedes C-Class. It is literally a baby S-Class, both outside, inside and underneath. It even stares the same second generation rear wheel drive platform. And the new C-Class is probably the last generation to have a diesel engine. So it'd be interesting to do a deep dive in a staple in Mercedes lineup. The new C-Class has grown in its proportions compared to the old C-Class. It looks smarter, but not as sophisticated perhaps. And at least in Sweden, I think that the CLA has intruded a bit on the C-Class brand and exterior. Here lies the really, really mild hybrid diesel engine. It is actually a beefed up starter motor and it produces 220 horsepower in total and 440 newton meters. Plenty for daily use. And actually, I've tested it for almost a week and without hypermiling, I have been able to get this car down to 0 0.38 liters per 10 kilometer. And that is really, really impressive. And here is the rear luggage of the new C-Class and it is actually quite large. Believe it or not, I even fit in here. And if you want to, you can even fold down the rear seats if you need to move something that is quite wide, but not as thick. In the rear seat now, and I do fit. It is a compact sedan after all, but my knees are not hitting. And there's a decent amount of headroom. I like that they have a nice cut out on the side door, which helps with making the cabin feel wider than it is. The front seats have a quite interesting design. They're quite huggy and the headrest moves front and back, which means that it is quite easy to nick your fingers, but it allows for a lot of space in the rear since they have this flowing design and it, they are quite thin. In the driver's seat now, and as I said before, the new C-Class is a baby S-Class. Good for the C-Class perhaps, maybe not as good for the S-Class. And that does mean that it has an all-round freshness to it. You have a huge screen in the middle, you have a huge digital gauge cluster with the same um, design as in the S-Class. Even the design on the air vents is the same, and even on the sides. I mean, it is a baby S-Class. However, since this middle screen is so large, it does make the interior feel quite cramped. The interior looks really nice, but in terms of perceived build quality, there's a lot of cheap plastic in the interior. And the MBX system is also quite difficult to navigate. I mean, it is responsive, but I find myself looking at it quite long and not on the road. And going back to the perceived build quality, I think that BMW might be ahead on that one. Driving the new C-Class is comfortable. The steering is a bit dead, but the way this new C-Class soaks up the bumps and creates an almost carpet ride is pretty amazing. Would I consider this a car that you can take on a back road? No, but it isn't meant for that either. However, when you're standing still and you want to drive off and you're using the start and stop, when the diesel engine kicks in, it feels quite aggressive and it isn't as smooth as I thought it would be. Also, the braking pedal is extremely soft and pretty difficult to judge. There have been times where I tried to stop for a red light and because the braking pedal is so soft I almost went through the red light. They're really really difficult to judge. The gearbox is a 9 speed and for the most part it does the job. It shifts smoothly but when you go into manual and drive a bit more aggressive, a bit more dynamic the gearbox can be a bit confused sometimes, especially when downshifting. 
because the power then comes in a massive lump and can surprise you sometimes. And the power that this car has, 220 horsepower, is a suitable amount of power for this car. It makes it easy to pass and to drive on the highway. As I said before, the steering isn't that responsive, it feels quite dead. But it corners quite flat and the chassis is really finely tuned so it's, it's easy to keep a line and it follows really easily. But once again, it's a 220D, it's not an AMG product. So to be responsive, to be rewarding to drive is nothing that I was expecting it to be. But it's nice that it at least corners flat and gives you some sort of confidence through the bends. What's left is the price and the competitors. And the C200 costs from 39,000 euros. This costs from 41,000 euros. And this is of course a base spec, which means that you can spec the new C-Class to above 50,000 euros. Regarding the competitors, you have the BMW 3 Series, you have the Audi A4, you have the Volvo S60, you have the Alfa Romeo Giulia, and you also have the Jaguar XE. In terms of price, in terms of design, in terms of interior tech, the new Mercedes C-Class is a very compelling argument when you want to buy a more compact sedan. The Volvo S60 doesn't come as a diesel, it's only a mild hybrid petrol. The Alfa Romeo Giulia is the competitor from Italy and it's a more of a niche product. The Jaguar XE costs from 50,000 euros, so that falls down automatically just because it's so expensive. So, what do we have left? Well, the Audi A4, but I think that the A4 feels a bit dated. What do we have left? Well, the Mercedes and the BMW. And the BMW, I personally think that the exterior of the BMW brings together smartness and contemporary really, really well. And the perceived quality on the interior of the BMW, I think is better. So, which of the cars should you choose? Should you choose the Mercedes or the BMW? Well, it comes down to brand identity. Do you want that Mercedes tech heavy focus where everything looks really, really cool? Or do you go for that BMW focus of driving enjoyment? It comes down to what car you like, the brand that you like. The Mercedes is a compelling argument. And the new C-Class is a heavy hitter in the compact segment. And that's my final thought for the new Mercedes C-Class. See you next time.